Hello everybody and welcome back. Today's update on the BAD 6502 is a rather short one because there's not a lot to show. But there are some things and I want to show them. First of all, I have been able to get the new hardware to run. I made some improvements. I now have my own little Linux distribution that is very lightweight, that starts up just in a couple of seconds and that can then hand over control to the simulation. Uh, meaning you turn this thing on and whatever you're simulating almost comes up immediately. Um, almost. I'm still running uh, all my development on the small version here and uh, it's just been rock solid. Uh, no issues whatsoever. I did some things regarding HDMI audio and uh, that is probably one of the biggest improvements that I have made uh, in this last week. And uh, I'll just show you. Um, if I start up um, some sort of emulation right now or simulation of the uh, back end, um, I can start my um, operating system running on the virtual hardware and for the Commander X16 I was able to implement sound. Uh, it's not perfect um, but it's getting there, it's improving. Uh, there are still some issues because the simulation is still running a little flaky. There is lots of clock jitter and you can hear that and also um, the hardware on the Raspberry Pi is very much different than the hardware on a real Vera chip or the hardware on a big computer. Uh, we're dealing with a software that needs to run v at a very, very uh, small, in, in a very small time frame. And um, we just don't have the frequencies that we get on a PC and we, we just don't get uh, the throughput per clock on one of these small ARM chips. And it, it doesn't really matter if it's, if it's a large Raspberry Pi or a small one, uh, the microcontroller on it is basically the same. So let's fire up something. Um, I'm using uh, Petsky Robots for testing because uh, it is uh, fairly easy to run and it is easy to find samples on the internet where I can compare the sound that I'm getting. And you can hear the sound that I'm getting and if you know what it's supposed to sound like you immediately notice it's way too slow. Uh, but that's okay because the original version of Petsky Robots for the um, Commander X16 uh, was written to run with 8 megahertz clock. So this thing has about 1.5. So it's pretty obvious the timing must be off. But the rest of the things that I have are basically working. So I do get pretty good timing. Um, if I put the mic here. I can walk towards the door. And the timing of the audio fits. The frequencies are all wrong, or the frequency could be about right, but the, but the timing of the sound, the, sh the sound should be a lot shorter. Um, but uh, for a start, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, for a while, I didn't think I would get there at all. And uh, looking at the code of the emulator, it took me very long to get to know that and to get into being able to use it in a way um, that is easy for me to consume and at the same time I'm not really uh, messing up the code too much. Uh, regarding the the emulation of the Vera chip, that is probably going to be something very much different. Uh, the little Raspberry Pi CPU just doesn't have the power to do cycle correct emulation of the Vera. So um, 
I'm going to have to find a way to cut some corners or to make some things um, slimmer than it was on real hardware, which is a shame. Um, right now, with an emulation like this, uh, I'm getting pretty good graphic response times, uh, but at the same time, the, the timing is completely wrong. So um, a refresh of the screen that would usually take the Vera um, within a few cycles of the real CPU uh, takes like forever on this. And I don't think I'm going to be able to fix that. But I can at least try. Uh, on other projects running on this, I have been able to work on a memory map and uh, memory and I.O. emulation for the Commodore C64. Uh, but it's nowhere close to running. It's a little bit more complicated than the VIC-20 because uh, the PLA chip has the power to switch between ROM and RAM banks and that needs to be emulated. And also the entire map is a little bit more um, fractured. Uh, it, it takes more it takes more effort just to get it right. And I want to get it right because if I get the memory and uh, I.O. emulation wrong, uh, I just don't get any good refresh rates uh, against the CPU and that means that the clock will be running very slow. And I want to get to the point where it's running just like a real C64 would. And uh, once I have that, um, the whole thing starts all over again. I have to see how I can emulate a VIC, I have to see how I can emulate a SID, and I have to get the two vias working correctly and then somehow glue everything together uh, up to the point where it works. Same thing is happening for um, some Apple simulation, um, but I put that to the side a little bit. Uh, because uh, Apple video generation is kind of hard to do on this thing. Uh, it's not impossible, but it's just hard. And I can only focus on so many things right now. I also got in touch with some of the uh, developers and creators of the X16. And uh, we had some interesting chats and I found out a little bit of um, inside information of the hardware, which makes it easier for me to do a simulation of that, even if it's a slow one. And um, I also got more information about the different releases of the emulator and the ROM, so I can now make smarter choices when I decide uh, which ROM am, am I going to emulate and uh, how does it relate to the hardware that is in the emulator right now. Um, because I'm basically using that as a blueprint. 95% of my simulation code is the original X16 emulator. Uh, only the CPU part and some of the timing sensitive parts uh, is different, as well as everything around the memory layout and the interface between CPU, memory and I.O. Uh, that is very much dependent um, on this hardware. Uh, but apart from that, it is still very, very similar. And that's the nice thing because it is very easy to program a new platform uh, with this thing in a way that the platform can later be uh, implemented in hardware. And you can, of course, do things that you could never do in hardware. So it's pretty versatile. Now, most of the software that I wrote for this is already on GitHub, um, especially uh, the back-end code that enables you to make your own um, hardware implementations of your own uh, dream hardware. And also, uh, it's kind of a how-to of how to attach this to existing ROMs and make them work. Uh, the hardware layouts for uh, both, bo both boards um, are on easy EDA. Uh, they can be exported to uh, Gerber files and those can be ordered either, either from JLC, PCB or any other service as you want them. 
I'm still making two small changes to this board. So uh, this one has just uh, gone missing from the repos. Uh, I'm going to re-add this soon um, because I am not sure that the layout that I chose for my um, extension bus um, make make a lot of sense right now. Um, not sure about that, but I'll get it figured out. And once I have, um, it's going to be uh, added back into the GitHub repo. Uh, for a start, the small board um, is, uh, is very good for trying this out and for getting started. Uh, yeah, I think that is about everything that I wanted to say. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun to work with this thing. And um, if I find the time, I'm going to continue and uh, publish more code and maybe even make some sort of a uh, test bed where you can have your own uh, 6502 code and just upload it and let it run on the platform. And it just gives you a very simple way of sending uh, text back, maybe even give you some sort of uh, graphical interface that you can interact with, but keep it really simple um, because that's the beauty of it. Uh, you can simulate the most complex thing on 6502 with this um, or just have the simple CPU send it some code and see what happens. So, right, I think that's it for today. Uh, thank you very much for watching and um, hopefully see you next week. Bye-bye.